Here it is, the long-awaited pack explosion. This is for my 2024-2025 Appalachian Trail through hike attempt. This is all the gear I've accumulated and kind of necked down to over the past seven years of section hiking. And I think this blob of stuff probably uh, is optimized for me. You may see things that you hate and you may see things that you really like. Gear tends to be a personal uh, kind of an item. So these are my choices. Your choices may be different, but this is what I'll be carrying. And some of the reasons why I like or might not like some of the things I got. We'll start with the pack. This is the Z-Pax Arc Hall 60 uh, backpack. It's got uh, pocket on the back, pockets on the sides. Um, 60 liters includes the pocket volume. If you look at the pack volume, it's like 47 liters, I think. So it's not quite big enough for winter, but big enough for everything else. And uh, along with that, let me get these out of the way. These are the Fizan uh, Pacific Crest Trail Edition. I got these, they had a cute little picture of a Durston tent on them and they were green, so I got them. Um, they're aluminum, they're lightweight. Uh, I happen to like them, so I'm going to keep using them. And I've attached to the top of the backpack a Z-Pax uh, Z -Pax multi pack. I will go over what's in this a little bit later, but those are all the things that I keep in my brain. Sitting right on top is a Thermarest Z seat. My wife got this for me for Christmas like seven years ago, and I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. And you know what? I think this is my most favorite piece of gear. I use this on every trip. I sit on it, I put it underneath my sleeping mat, I put it under my sleeping bag, I kneel on it, it's a doormat, it fans fires, it, it does everything. Um, doesn't weigh a whole lot and it makes me super comfortable. I like it, I'm keeping it. And I guess I'll work through the pockets. The fairly standard, everybody uses them, smart water bottle. I might transition to a Desanti bottle. Uh, this bottle weighs 40 grams. I think the Desanti bottle is like 28 or 29 grams as a one liter. This is a uh, 700 milliliter. So six of one, half dozen of another. I generally hike with between a liter and uh, 1.7 liters. So I'll carry this bottle and maybe an additional one liter bottle. Most of the time though, I'm just carrying the one uh, at least filled up. Got a outdoor research hat. It's super lightweight. It reflects heat off of me and it has an optional attachment, which I have somewhere in here uh, for a kind of a neck sunscreen thing. I like that. I've got the uh, poop kit. Gotta have a poop kit. Let's just start off with that right away. Not a whole lot in here right now. Generally, it's got toilet paper, super important. And it's got a poop shovel, which is just a titanium pressed poop shovel. I got this one off eBay uh, a long time ago. I don't think you can find them anymore, but there's so many out there on the market. Get yourself a shovel, be comfortable, dig a hole, poop in it. Don't leave that stuff laying around. And a, uh, a bandana. I've never used the bandana for anything. So other than keeping the sharp edges of the poop shovel away from my backpack, it doesn't do a whole lot. So I might figure out something else for that. And it all goes in this little bag. Sometimes I have more toilet paper. Sometimes I have less toilet paper. Sometimes I got other stuff in there. But it's all related to that. I also have in here, I've got a uh, be free uh, Katadyne or Katadyne or however you pronounce it, uh, the Be Free water filter system on a, uh, I forget who makes this bag. Is this a Hydra Pack? 
Yeah, this is a two liter uh, hydro pack bag. I've had this a long time. It works really well. I'm gonna keep using it. I have a few different water filters. Um, some are lighter, some are heavier. I'll probably start out with this and when it wears out, I'll kind of go to some of the others. But for now, that's my keeper. And what else do I have in here? Tent pegs. I've got a Hilltop Packs tent stake bag. And I've got a handful of stakes in here. I've got some uh, carbon core stakes. I've got some tube stake stakes, the seven inch ones that are longer. I've got a handful of uh, these little shepherd's hook, titanium shepherd's hook things. Um, actually, I've got four of the tube stakes. I've got two of the carbon core stakes, and I've got uh, three shepherd's hooks. And that gives me enough stake versatility for almost any condition I run into on the AT. I've also got in here, um, it's a pole extender, a pole jack uh, for your trekking poles that goes with my tent. I haven't used it. I still carry it around. I'll probably leave that at home just because it's not really needed. My poles are long enough and they work okay. All right, enough of that. Stakes. Uh, it's everything, oh, not everything there. So I've also got a uh, Hyperlite Mountain Gear uh, phone pocket, and I've got a little, uh, what do you call it, a Thermodrop thermometer hanging off of that. Inside here, I keep my satellite communicator. This is a Garmin, uh, what is it, a GPS map 67i. So it does mapping and tracking and plotting uh, over satellite comms and it does uh, bi-directional texting. It'll work with or without the app on my phone. A uh, pretty versatile unit. It's a little heavier than the others. The battery's monstrous. So it'll, it'll run for weeks uh, without much issue um, if you're not doing it to like actually take GPS tracks every 50 feet. Um, if you do 15 minute, half hour plots, it, it runs a long time. And I've got uh, some other bungees and stretchy things on there. All right, so that's everything. Oh, and a Hyperlite Mountain Gear Versa, which is my belt pack. And I'll talk about what's inside that in a bit. Into the pack. Hilltop Packs food bag. Um, they do a nice job printing graphics on them. They're affordable. They come with a little rock sack to throw it up in the air. I'll go over its contents again in a minute. Hyperlite Mountain Gear Mid One. I've done a few videos on this tent. Uh, I like it. Works really well for me. Only weighs 500 grams. I did add to it a ground sheet that my friend Kurt Zitzelman over at Hemlock Mountain Outdoors uh, cut me one out of DCF. So I've got that as kind of to go underneath it to keep the tent relatively clean. Let the mud get on the uh, ground sheet. So that's tent. I've got right on top where you need them, um, REI rain pants. They work good in the wind. They work good in the cold. Um, they work good if you have to sit on something wet. Uh, if you sit on snow or stuff like that, I, I like these pants quite a bit. They're just, they're not that light, but they're the regular REI branded rain pants. They got pockets and they work good. I've been using them and I'm kind of like, if it works, don't fix it. So I'm going to keep using these. I've got, um, this great thing is a pump sack for pumping up. The, uh, this comes with the Thermarest Neo Air series uh, sleeping pads. And in it, I've got the, uh, it's, what do you call it? It's the Neo Air x Light Women's. So it's a little bit shorter than the standard one, and it's a little bit warmer than the standard one, and it's quite a bit lighter than the standard one, which is why I use the women's one. I don't mind having my feet 
hang off the end uh, that much. Some people do. If you do, just get the regular length one. Some people hate having their arms hang off the side. I'm a side sleeper, so that doesn't bother me. Um, but if you do, get the wide version, because this one, if you're laying on your back, your arms will be on the ground. Uh, it's kind of uncomfortable if you're a back sleeper. Also in here, I always, I keep all my sleep stuff in this bag so it's all together. I've got a uh, Black Rock Gear wool cap. I wear this a lot when it's cold. I sleep in it. Uh, company is no longer uh, in business, but I thought they made the most awesome. Uh, they made down beanies, which I carry in the winter, and they made these wool caps. And they made a few other things too. Um, but there's similar products on the market. This works well for me. And I've also got in here a pillow. Gotta have a pillow. I'm a pillow sleeper. I use the Sea to Summit Eros Down Pillow. It's a little bit lighter than the Eros Premium. Um, I think it's a little more comfortable too. One side of it's got like a down layer in it. And it's, you know, it's an inflatable pillow. Let's see, sleeping quilt. During the summer and fringe seasons, I'm a quilt liker. In the winter, I do use a sleeping bag. This is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma. It's a uh, 40 degree rated quilt, and it's the regular length, uh, 950 down wide version. And I've been using this for know, a year and a half now, and it, it's really good. I have a 30 degree version uh, also of that, which was, uh, I got it used, it was cut for a, a hammock, and it's, so it's really narrow, and it, it was too narrow for me, so I switched to the 40 degree and made sure it was wide, and, and that's really good. What else do I have in here? I got a shirt. Um, so generally I don't carry a lot of extra clothes. I wear hiking socks, I wear uh, synthetic underwear, and some kind of wool, wool top layer. Uh, so I'm almost always just wearing this shirt when I'm hiking. If it gets cold out, I'll transition to a, like a, a three-quarter length sleeve or a long sleeve. This is one I uh, got from one of the sailing clubs last summer. Uh, 2023 Governor's Cup Synthetic Sailing Shirt. It's yellow, it's neat, it's not that heavy, and it keeps me warm. What else is in here? Ah, okay, wind layer. So I got a windbreaker. This is the REI, REI Flash, I think. Um, and I put this over my, my other layers if I'm trying to stay warm. Uh, it's not a rain jacket and it doesn't actually pretend to be a rain jacket. It's not good at that. Uh, but it's good at keeping you warm, especially when you layer it with um, this Senshi Designs Merlin Alpha hoodie thing. Um, it, it's basically uh, Polar Tech Alpha Direct uh, 120 weight with a hood, and it's got uh, partial zipper and a, and a kangaroo pocket. I like it. It's good. It, it vents extremely well. If I'm hiking and I need a little extra warmth, I can put this on and I won't sweat uh, that much. And if I stop though and the wind blows, the wind blows right through this thing. It's not a warm layer when you're sitting around doing nothing. However, if you put this on top of it, it suddenly becomes extremely warm. So this is kind of my my layering system to take the place of a fleece that weighs about half as much as a fleece does. Um, and in my opinion, works just as good. And then when it gets colder, I have a, uh, uh, a Montbell puffy. This is the uh, I think it's the thousand, the thousand fill down one. Um, it's got a hood. It's super warm. It's super light. So I like that. I've got, let's see, the rain gear. 
The rain top is a Montbell Versalite. So this is a fairly light rain jacket, which does a fairly decent job keeping rain out. It breathes well, it breathes very well. Um, it's got pit zips, it's got ways to ventilate it. Um, it's got nice hood straps and it's light. Did I say it breathes? It breathes well. Um, so that's my rain layer to go with the, the cheesy rain pants. And then I've also got spares. Because for sure, you're probably going to poop your pants when you're hiking. So I got a spare set of underwear. I've got a very thin pair of wool socks. If my feet overheat, uh, which sometimes they do in the summer, they don't like a normal um, sock. They like thin socks. So I got a thin sock as well as some Injinji wool, a toe sock liner thing. So I got an extra set of liners, extra set of socks, and an extra set of underwear, kind of one each. Um, and that's it, I'm not a sock fiend. I don't have a thousand pairs of socks or anything like that. And then I got this little blue bag filled with stuff. It's kind of my utility kit I've got. In here, there's like a whistle, a set of matches, um, the, the patch kit for the inflatable mattress, and uh, I say matches, uh, some cotton balls. It's basically my pyro kit and with a whistle. I might or might not take this. I've actually carried it around with me for like seven years and I've never opened it. Um, but, you know, as part of the 10 essentials, you know, it's got a whistle and a pyro kit that doesn't weigh that much. So I've got it. And inside the pack, I've got a Nylofume pack liner. The pack is already pretty darn waterproof. Um, pack liner, I keep like all my down stuff inside it and my clothes inside it. Everything else I'll keep outside of it. Uh, the tent, the food, um, stuff like that. It, um... I think that's it for what's actually in the pack. So let's go to some of these other things here. We've got... It's in the brain. What is in my brain? Ooh, I've got uh, Luco tape. This is old Luco tape. It's hard to get off the roll. Um, I need to replace this before the hike. I do tend to carry a lot of Luco tape, not because I use it, but because everybody else does. So if you see me on the trail and you need a slice of Luco tape, I've got it. I've got you covered. On um, this orange thing, this is a pack cover. Uh, I got this from Dutchware Gear. I don't need a pack cover. The pack is waterproof, and I've got a Nylofoom liner in the pack. That's waterproof. Yeah, this adds a little extra layer of protection. The main reason I have it is because it's orange. And during hunting season, I like to be seen. So this is my wear a ton of orange during hunting season uh, thing. I've got uh, Picaridin insect repellent. Bugs have been out. I carry insect repellent. Works great. Oh, talking about insect repellent. Uh, trail name Alpha Gal here, but I don't have any more. Um, all my all my uh, clothes are treated with permethrin, so they are hosed down with it really well. I do that a few times a year. Um, that does keep the ticks uh, off the clothing. I've had very few ticks crawling on me since I've started treating the clothing, and the the keratin uh, lotion. It's not that offensive, it's not that sticky, and it works pretty good for mosquitoes. Flies, I'd say not so much. Um, in the case of them, I carry a little head net, and for the times I've needed to use this, uh, most recently in New York last year, so glad I had the head net. I'd have gone insane without it. So, gotta have my head net. Spare water bottle cap. I've got the throwing line, uh, the little rock bag, and some Zingit Arborist 
cord and a little carabiner for hanging my food bag uh, using the PCT hang up in a tree when a uh, suitable storage container or facility is not available at whatever campsite I happen to be at. Electronics bag, we'll get to this in a second. Uh, guy lines for the tent. If I gotta really stick it down or stick it weird or do something funny with it, I've got some extra skinny lines to stake it out. I've got the straps for the quilt to wrap it around and secure it to the pad. Uh, if you don't want any cold air leaking in, they give you these, these bungee straps to help with that. I've got uh, my contact information in this bag, my name, my address, my phone number, uh, my emergency point of contact phone number in case I am found uh, incapacitated or something on the trail. People will know who to get a hold of. I've got a little knife, a squirt, a utility knife. It's got a little pair of pliers in it and some other tools, so it, it's pretty good. And I'll start with the electronics. This I normally don't carry with me because it's kind of heavy, but I will carry it for the through hike is the actual wall brick for charging the, the batteries. Um, this is the Anchor, um, what is it, again, Prime. Uh, it's a high current, high power, high wattage. It's got two USB-Cs and a USB-A output on it. It'll charge my bricks really fast. So I like this, so I'm not waiting all night to charge something up. And, oh, look, I've got a zip tie. So that's everything that's in my brain. Electronics bag. Cords. Everybody's got to love cords. I recently got a iPhone 15, which is what this is being recorded on. So I've got wired headphones, which are USB-C. I've got a couple of USB-C cables to a older uh, USB micro connector for my headlamp, which is in the other bag. Uh, set of earbuds, wireless, Amazon cheesy stuff. A pair of reading glasses. Um, I've got fairy lights because I think they're fun um, and I can find my tent in the dark when I'm trying to get back from using the bathroom. Um, I don't really need these, but I like them. So I'll keep carrying them around. I've got a couple different bricks. I've got the Nightcore uh, second generation 10,000 milliamp hour uh, brick. I like this one because it charges up really quickly and it discharges really fast into your device. It's a high current charger. It's got USB-C output and a USB-A uh, output on it. And I've, I've been pretty happy with this. I can get uh, about two and a half charges uh, on my phone with this. And then I've also got a Anchor um, I don't know which model this is. It's their 12,000 milliamp hour battery, and it's got a pair of USB-C uh, outputs on it, as well as a little digital gauge on the front that tells you how much is left, uh, how many watts you're charging at, and stuff like that. This is, this is a good charger. It's fast, it charges fast, and it charges your stuff fast. So this is, I like this. And this is more of a toy than anything. This is something called a Pad Pal. Everybody's got these, these blow-up battery-powered, fill your sleeping pad with air, you know, using a battery. Um, this one, uh, you can look it up online. I forget the guy who made it, but it's called a Pad Pal. He's got a website. This weighs 10 grams, and it blows your pad up and I plug it, it plugs right into your, your charging brick. So it's USB-C, plug it into your brick, charge your pad, good to go. I like it, it's kind of fun, doesn't weigh a whole lot. We'll see if I can get a through hike out of it. If not, I've got the pump sack. Pump sack works great, so I'll keep using that. All right, that's everything in my electronics bag. That's all that stuff. Now we can go to what's in my pack, my front utility pack. Got more teepee. 
because you got to have TP where you can get it. Got a little first aid kit. It's got basically uh, Excedrin, ibuprofen, some band-aids, some alcohol wipes, some gauze pads to go with the Luco tape, and some other bigger band-aidy things, and maybe some some poop medicine or something. It, 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 it's not a whole lot. Um, you know, if you cut your arm off, it's not going to help with that. If you start bleeding because you got caught in a pricker bush, that this will help with that. Uh, other water purification, other than my filter. So I happen to like Aquamira drops. It's a two-part system, part A, part B. It makes, uh, let's see, seven drops of each. Let it sit for four minutes. It turns yellow, stinks like chlorine. It makes chlorine dioxide, uh, which bubbles through the water, and it kills everything. Works pretty good. I like it. It's not horribly heavy. Um, and it does kind of sterilize your stuff, too, so it keeps my, my dirty bag clean. Um, you can pre-mix it so you don't have to wait the four minutes. I have a little Visine eyedropper. I kind of pre-mix into that if I'm going to use it. And then I've got this other little thing. Uh, somebody at Trail Days a few years ago uh, gave this to me. It's called a, a flow leaf. It's like a little plastic trough that hooks to your water bottle that I can't find. I put it somewhere. Anyway, you clip it onto your water bottle. There we go. Kind of like you see rhododendron leaves stuck to um, a rock to get your water. It makes it kind of trickle off. You can use this plastic spout, jam it up under a rock, underneath something, stick it in to where you just got a barely a, a trickle of water. It will trickle down the trough into the bottle. I've used it quite a bit actually in low flow conditions. It, it helps quite a bit. I'm not sure if you can get these anymore, but you get the point. It's just a fun little utility thing. I've got a, uh, what's this? This is the Nightcore headlamp. Um, it's been modified with a different headband. It's just a flat, flat bungee, uh, a little cord adjuster on it. It weighs an ounce and it's very reliable. I like that headlamp. And I've got a pen and some stickers to put in log books of my YouTube channel. And I've got a wallet and a little compass. Oh, and for my hands, I've got these little mitts. Um, Hightail Designs makes uh, waterproof mitts. So I happen to like these. They work pretty good. It's kind of a DCF variant. Um, in the winter, I'll also carry a pair of mittens. So this will go over those. But in case it's cold and wet, um, I can wear these alone or I can wear socks in these. No big deal. I'm a sock man. Um, okay, so that's everything out of there, everything out of there. Oh, food bag. Food bag. In the food bag, we've got a toothbrush with a long handle because I don't like putting my fingers in my mouth when I'm trying to brush my teeth and my hands are dirty from hiking. So long handle toothbrush. I've got a bamboo spoon because it's half the weight, actually it's a third the weight of a titanium spoon and it's just as long and it's a little bigger on the end. So I like my, my uh, bamboo spoon. I need to replace this thing uh, my wife uses this when we're sharing a meal. It, it's a spoon-fork combo. Um, it's not long enough, and I melted the end off the fork, so it's kind of damaged. Um, so I'll probably just get some kind of plastic fork and stick it in my bag. GSI coffee cup. Uh, luxury item. My, my uh, regular titanium cup, which I'll show you in a minute, 
if I'm doing things in parallel, I like to like drink coffee while I'm doing something else instead of just working out of one cup. This one's pretty good. It's insulated. Um, it's got little graduations on the side, so I know how much water I, I'm using. You know, I can measure it when I put it in a dehydrated meal. It's got a top. Um, I can store things in it in my food bag that are breakable. Um, like, uh, that was dumb. Breakable, breakable food. Okay, but I can put stuff in it. Um, usually I just have my coffee in there. Uh, and I can uh, do like a lunch bag and put dehydrated food in that and rehydrate it in this without getting it dirty. So I'm just cooking in the bag. All right, cook kit. Cook kit is based on a Tox 550. It's an alcohol stove. So I've got some alcohol. The lid, I've replaced the lid with a plastic lid. It's a carbon fiber uh, lid from Roto Lacura, I think is how it's pronounced. It's really light, it works, I like it, um, but it's a lid. The stove itself, the burner, is a, uh, yeah, I forgot what it's called. But Zelf makes it. It's a starlight is what it's called. And this one has a slightly smaller aperture for use inside a cone. Uh, so my stove system is based on a cone. So empty the rest out of my cup here. I've got a lighter. I've got a little scrubby and a tiny shamwow just to clean stuff up. I've got another little container for fuel. Um, I've got the aluminum lid seal from a can of peanuts, which I use to put my burner on. So there's my bottom, there's my burner. And then on top of that, I put the cone. And I think the cone is a normal, I think Trail Designs made this. It's a, it's a small cone that rolls up inside this little thing. Um, so you got a cone, and then the Tox 550, uh, Zelf went and, and knurled a, uh, a ridge into it. So the cup's been modified, it has a ridge, and what the ridge does is it keeps it from falling through the cone, so I can just set it on the cone. For people that don't have that on their cup, you can stretch one of those silicone uh, bracelets will fit just as easily around that and hold it up out of the fire. So that is the stove. And I've got extra fuel I keep in a Blasani bag, which is for like scotch and whiskey or, or whatever. Um, but it holds fuel just as well, so I use my fuel in there. Holds like eight ounces spare bags, coffee, um, some Espit tablets for people that cook with pellets. Um, I carry a few, I use them as fire starters or an emergency stove system if I've got to boil something and a little, a little aluminum thing to put those on. And hand sanitizer. And, uh, yeah, right, what is this stuff? Sunscreen, chapstick, I have that. So that's kind of it. So that's, that's all the stuff that I'm carrying in my pack. I think that's everything. Um, been section hiking for like seven years. I've kind of whittled it down and whittled it down and added things and taken things away and added things and taken things away. And this is kind of where I'm at right now. I think it's gonna work out in the winter. I'll change the quilt for something heavier. I'll change the sleeping pad for something warmer and I might or might not uh, go to a slightly different tent. I don't, I don't know, I haven't picked on that yet. So there you have it. Oh, there is one more thing. I do have, and I can't decide if I wanna bring it or not, the umbrella. 
So I call this my emotional support umbrella because when I use it, it either turns inside out, it, it, it doesn't work, it gets tangled in trees, pricker bushes grab it, branches grab it, everything's grabbing at it, and, and it just, it's not, it doesn't work for me when I'm hiking through the woods. If I'm hiking through a field, it works pretty good, but if it's too windy, then not so much. If I'm holding it up in the air so I can maneuver it around trees and things, then I've got a trekking pole I'm not using. It gets kind of awkward. I do have a setup where I can attach it to my shoulder strap and I can go uh, hands-free with it, but then it still gets stuck on things. However, it's really nice in and around camp. It's really nice in town. Uh, if it's not windy and it's a gentle straight rain, uh, it's actually really nice. So I'm kind of torn whether or not I bring the umbrella or not. Um, so, so yeah, leave me a comment below and, and give me your opinions on your, your, uh, whether you like or dislike the umbrella. I, I'm, I'm kind of torn about the whole umbrella thing. It's added weight. I don't want to carry it, but I like it when it's working. That's the umbrella story. All right, that's all my stuff. Uh, if you see something that I'm missing, uh, drop a comment down below. If you see something that you think is like, why are you doing that? Ask a question and then I'll see if I can't come up with some kind of irrational answer as to why I'm carrying something stupid. Um, and uh, other than that, yeah, I'll uh, see you all out and about. Talk to you later. <laughs> it's part of the experience. <laughs> Total chaos.